Mike Phillips down here at Auto Geek Show Car Garage in sunny Stewart, Florida. And today I'm going to go over some tips and techniques for working on the vertical panels of a car, truck, or SUV. Now for today's demonstration, I'm going to use my friend's Kodiak truck that I call Behemoth. And that's just because it'll make it easy for me to demonstrate the tips and techniques because I can stand here and run the buffer. But in most cases, I'd get a creep stool if I was working on a car or truck and get down. So I'm always looking across from the paint when I'm buffing it. Now, one of our forum members sent me an email and in the email they said, hey Mike, I always see you talking about picking up a bead of product when using the rotary buffer. Could you share this so I can do it too? I'm going to do that today. I'm going to show you how to use what we call the 10 at 10 technique to pick up a bead of product using a rotary buffer and that just helps you keep from slinging product out over the place and it kind of makes you look like a pro when you're buffing. So the other thing I'm going to do is share a lot of tips and techniques on actually doing the machine polishing, cleaning your pads and things that will help you in the garage. But to start with I want to go ahead and prepare this for machine buffing so let me go ahead and get that going. Anytime you're going to machine polish, the goal is to buff carefully. Sometimes that means taking your time. But it's a good precautionary step to go ahead and tape things off like this door handle here. Now, a lot of modern cars and trucks have what I call pebble textured black plastic. And that's what we have right here and over here and some various other places on this truck. And if you get polish or wax or any kind of compound residue into these little like textured uh, surface right here it's really hard to get out it kind of almost stains it for life so instead of doing that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some painters tape and go ahead and tape this off and then I'll try real hard not to actually run the pad over this but if I do then at least it'll be protected and to do this you just want to get this close pull your tape around and then tuck this in with your finger And again, this will just save you some cleanup time and it'll keep you from staining that plastic for a lifetime. Okay, as you notice, I've also taped off the door hinges. And the reason for this is they have a lot of sharp points on them. And just in case you accidentally run the, the buffing pad into them, you don't want to burn the paint off all these. So again, I'm just going to take and bring some painter's tape in here and cover up all these sharp edges like that. I've taped off the plastic trim here and there's no trim around these back windows but there is a piece here so I went ahead and taped that off too and again I'm going to always try to be careful when I'm buffing but in case I run that pad over these areas I'm not going to cream them out with polished wax. I'm going to have to come back and get all that stuff off there. So it's a good idea to go ahead and tape everything off that you don't want to get residue onto and it'll save you a lot of time in the back end from having to do any cleanup work. Okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I want to show you how I'd approach buffing out a panel, panels like these. The front door, uh, middle doors right here and again this would apply to anything you're working on vertical panels and usually what I would do and I'm just going to use some painters tape for this but I'm going to take this off this is just to give you a visual representation but whenever you're using a machine to polish out a car or truck you always want to break it into sections you know so you, you can't tackle this whole door at one time it's just too big to do a thorough job so what I would do is I'd kind of look at this and I'd size it up and there's a natural body line right here so I'd probably put a piece of tape somewhere like right here and I'd call this one section. So I'd buff out this section, get in around here, get this section and then there's another panel down here with a body line right here. And so instead of going over this body line because it's a good practice not to buff on top of a body line, I'd probably get a smaller pad and match my pad to the panel and buff out this section, this section, this section. That's how I tackle this door. If I move over to this door, same thing. I tackle this upper section and then I tackle this uh, lower section. Then I grab this panel with a smaller pad right here. And of course, same thing back here. So I'm going to break this up into sections, buff section by section, and that's how you tackle the vertical panels. I'm going to go ahead and take this off of here. Okay. Now let me get my buffers ready to go. These panels are all clean and ready to buff. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put some product down here. And this is where I'm going to use the picking up your bead technique. Now what I'm going to show you is called the 10 at 10 technique, but I'm going to show you how to modify it from there. Now the 10 at 10 technique is where you take and you pick your bead up at the 10 o'clock position on your buffing pad 
after you've tilted your pad about 10 degrees off the surface. So to help demonstrate that, I've taken a permanent marker and I've placed the numbers that you'd find on a clock on the back of my backing plate. Now this is, now you gotta remember when you're looking down on this and it's rotating, it's spinning clockwise this way. Okay, now I've turned this pad over and put an arrow on it and this is the way it's spinning. And the whole goal of this technique is when you run the product into the pad is you're gonna actually pull that product into the pad, not throw it outward. And then you're gonna trap it beneath the pad and then start buffing out your panel. And this is gonna keep you from getting splatter all over the place. It's gonna keep most of your product between the face of your pad and the paint where you want it so you can start getting the job done. So let me go ahead and share that with you. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to put a strip of product on the vertical panel here. To do that, I put some Wolfgang finishing glaze in a squeeze bottle, and this just makes it easy to get the product on the panel without getting on the floor. Okay, there's my strip or my bead of product. Okay, here's my buffer. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring this up to RPM, pull the trigger in, and I want to touch the three o'clock side down against the paint just lightly and then I'm going to go from right to left and I'm going to run that bead or that strip of product in right at the 10 o'clock mark and then soon, and this is raised off the surface about 10 degrees. Now as soon as I get across to the end of the bead then I want to quickly lay this down flat and that's where you're going to spread the product out to the area that you're going to buff at one time and then begin working that product. That would look just like this. I'm touching it down, running it in, laying it down flat. Now I spread the product out to the area I want to work, and then start making slow overlapping passes. And that's how you pick up your bead using the 10 and 10 technique. Now let me show you how to modify that technique. Once you understand the 10 at 10 technique, and that's picking up a bead of product and going from right to left, then it becomes relative once you understand that process, how you're picking up the bead and pulling it into the pad itself. So let me show you how to reverse that and pick it up at the four o'clock mark. Now to do that, you put up your strip of product, and instead of going from right to left, you put this over to the left hand side, and now the pad's spinning clockwise, and so that means you want to tilt it to the left hand side, just touching down, and then pulling that bead of product in at the four o'clock mark right there. And you'll get the same effect. You'll pull the product in, sandwich it between the pad, then as soon as you get past your bead, lay it down flat and start working the product. And that's how you pick it up going from left to right. Now you can use the same technique if you're working on a thin panel and you want to go up. Let me show you that. Here's my strip of product. I'm going to go from down here, from the bottom up. And so I'm going to tilt it uh, so the six o'clock is touching down. I'm going to run that bead in at the one o'clock. And since this is spinning clockwise like this, what this does is it grabs that product and it pulls it into itself instead of throwing it everywhere. That would look like this. And I can do the same thing if I want to come down on a panel. Here's my strip of product. I'm going to touch this down at the top. I'm going to bring this in right about the seven o'clock mark. And again, since this is rotating counterclockwise, coming up at an angle, as I come down on here, it's going to pull that bead into the pad instead of throwing it everywhere. So that's how you pick up your bead of product using the 10 at 10 technique or the modified method of picking it up depending on which direction you want to actually pick up your bead based upon the panel you're working on. Now that's for a rotary buffer because it spins clockwise. You can use this same technique for picking up your bead of product using the flex, only you reverse everything because the flex, the pad spins counterclockwise. So let me set up the flex and I'll show you that.
You can pick up a bead in much the same way you do with the rotary with the flex, except for you got to keep in mind with the flex, it rotates counterclockwise when you're looking down on the back of the machine. So it's trying to spin this way instead of this way. And so what that means is I want to do the same thing. I just want to take and think this out. Since it's spinning counterclockwise, I'm going to want to pull my bead of product in in a way that it'll pull into the pad, not throw it everywhere. So let me demonstrate that. There's a strip of product, and if I want to take and go from left to right, since this is spinning counterclockwise, I'm going to run it in about the one or the two o'clock mark. If you were looking at this like it was a clock, about right here, that would look like this. And then as soon as I get past the bead, I lay that down flat, spread the product out. Spread the product out over there, I'm going to work and start working the product. Anyway, that's how you pick up a bead on the fly using a flex. You just reverse the direction of everything because it spins counterclockwise. And the whole goal here is to learn how to pick up your bead and that way you, you look like a pro and you're buffing, but it brings your product in your pad where you want it so you're using it on the paint instead of splattering it out all over everything. So now I'm going to switch back over to the rotary because I want to show you some tips and techniques for working on small thin panels like this one down here where there's a body line in between the major surface area. Now let me share with you how to pick up your bead when working on small thin panels like you see here. There's a, there's a long vertical panel here where there's the edge or the rounded edge of the back of the cab here and then it lines up with the where the door opens here. There's a sharp seam here and it's a good best practice to not buff on top of a body line or an edge. Now a lot of guys if they're using a, a full size buffing pad like I've got on here, they'll simply just buff on a portion of it, just the edge of it. The problem with that is, is you do risk the chance of buffing on one of the high points here. So instead, what you can do is you can just switch over and match your buffing pad size to the size of the panel you're working on. So I'm going to put on a small backing plate here and I've got a variety of different foam pads down here that are smaller in diameter. These are the 4 inch CCS and look how nicely this fits this panel right here. This will allow me to buff out this section without buffing on this body line or this edge. Now we've got a couple smaller ones here. This is a 3 inch made by Griot's. I've got a little small backing plate that it can go on and look how that fits right in here so I can buff out this section right here. So let me show you how to pick up your bead on the fly using small buffing pads on these small thin panels like this. Always take and center these up as good as you can. You want to have them centered and true. Put this bead down. This is the new Flex a P14 uh, rotary buffer. It starts out at 600 RPM on the lock, and actually 400 if you just hold the trigger in. And that also makes it really easy to pick up your bead so you don't splatter everywhere. Now I see a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll take their product and they'll put some on the panel, then they'll take their buffer and they'll do this. They'll kind of smear it all over the place, then they'll turn the buffer on, and that'll work, but it'll still have a tendency to throw a splatter everywhere. So what I prefer to do is pick up my bead, There's a strip of product, or we call it a bead on the forum. Now I'm going to look at this again. Here's midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and just like a clock on the wall, I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to touch the 3 o'clock side just to the paint, just lightly, and I'm going to run that bead in at the 10 o'clock mark, going from right to left, and then as soon as I get past the bead, I'll lay it down flat and start working that product against the paint. And a lot of times for little panels like this, I actually like to take the handle off. What's nice about this flex is it's got a nice little shelf here, a nice little grip for you to put your hand. Anyway, so that would look like this. As soon as I get past the bead, lay it down flat. Spread my product out over the section I want to work. Bring my RPMs up, slow down, start working that panel. Anyway, that's how you pick up your bead using the 10 and 10 technique for a small panel. Now let me switch over to a 3 inch pad. Let's tackle this thin panel right here and I'll pick up my bead in an upward motion. Okay, I'm just going to take and line this up. Let's 
nice and true. There's a, a bead or a sipper product. And now I'm gonna take and run my buffer from the bottom up. And because this is spinning clockwise, I'm gonna pull that bead in right about the one o'clock mark. And effectively, when that's rotating, that's gonna bring that into the pad, trap it between the pad and the paint so I don't throw splatter all over the place. Anyway, that's how you pick up your bead. That's how you match your pad to the panel that you're working on. So next, I'm gonna go over some tips for cleaning your pad on the fly and keeping your pad clean using a pad washer and also a spur, because it's important to always work clean. This helps you prevent swirls in the paint. Anytime you're using a machine to buff paint, it's important to clean your pads often. It's also important to remove any residue off the paint before applying fresh residue. When you're buffing out paint, not only to have spent product, that's the product that you've been using that's now used up, but you're pulling off a little bit of the paint too and that builds up on the surface and on your pad. So here's one way to clean your pad. This is called a spur. This is a light cutting wool pad. And I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna bring this up to RPM, bring up the speed. Lock it in place. I'm gonna hold this against my knee. I'm gonna bring the spur down here, run this across the face of the pad. What this is gonna do is gonna kick off any of that dried product residue and then uh, kind of fluff up the fibers at the same time. Okay, so that's one way to clean a pad. Now this is for fiber pads only, wool cutting pads, wool finishing pads. It's called a spur. Now I know a lot of guys talk about using a screwdriver. Now if that's all you have, then I guess you could use it, but it's gonna damage the fibers. It's better to actually use a tool that's actually meant for the job. The spurs themselves, let's think of the spurs on a cowboy boot. They rotate, they, they lift up the fibers, they pull the excess product off, and they kind of refluff the pads so you're ready to go back and buff clean. Now let me show you how to buff out a section using proper technique. Anytime you're working on a vertical panel, there's a couple tips and techniques. One, you don't want to tackle too large of an area. Now most people say two foot by two foot is the largest you want to work. And that's about the width of your shoulders, maybe a bit larger. But you don't have to tackle a panel that big. In fact, usually as I showed you earlier, I kind of broke this panel up into this lower section because of the body lines. This major panel right here, a second major panel here. Then I'd work my way around the window until this door was done, then move on to the next panel. Uh, now to do this, I'm going to go ahead and do it like I showed. I'm going to show you how to pick up a bead on the fly. There's my strip of product, or my bead of product. I'm gonna pick that up. Now after I pick that up, here's a couple things. You always wanna have good leg stance, you know, so you wanna have your legs about the distance of your shoulders so you're stable. And uh, sometimes I see guys buffing and their arms are way out here. That gives your polish or leverage over you. Actually what you wanna do is you wanna hold that thing up closer to you so you can tighten up your muscles and completely control that buffer. Now. Most rotary buffers come with a handle. You can use one if you don't, if you like. My personal preference is I usually prefer just to go ahead and grab the head of the polisher. So I'm gonna pick this up, spread my product out, and then I'm gonna start making some overlapping passes. And usually your first cuts, you know, if I'm trying to take swirls and scratch it out of the paint, so I'm gonna apply some moderate pressure. As I finish my passes, I'm gonna bring my pressure up. Because remember, polishing paint is an art form. It's not a grinding process. We're trying to create beauty here. So I picked up my bead, spread my product out to the major portion of the panel. Now I'm ready to slow down and start working this panel. Okay, so even when you're on a vertical panel, again, you wanna try to keep this pad as flat as you can in surface. You don't wanna be on an edge 
because anytime you're on the edge, you'll be putting more pressure to one side of the pad. That's going to start to instill deeper swirls into the paint. So try to hold the pad flat. Again, try to be close to the buffer so you're not all stretched out like this. This gives the buffer leverage over you. If you're up close, you're going to have leverage over the buffer just because of your body mass here. And again, try to avoid buffing on edges. Tape off anything that you don't want to get splatter onto or anything with a hard edge like these hinges I have here. Then after you buff that section out, you go ahead and wipe that off. There's no need to let a polish or a compound dry. Inspect the results. If you've removed the defects you've been trying to remove, then you're ready to move on to the next section of paint and finish out that process, whether that's removing swirls or polishing to a high gloss. So that's how you'd use a rotary buffer on a vertical panel like that. Okay, I showed you how to use a spur previously to clean the fibers on a wool pad. And this works pretty good. If that's all you have, then use that. But a better way to clean your pad and actually pull this residue, which is spent product and removed paint, to get this off the pad so you don't reintroduce it when you move on to a new section, is to use what's called a pad washer. Now I've got the Grit Guard Universal Pad Washer and I've got the System 2000 Pad Washer and they both work really well for cleaning wool pads. So let me just show you how that works. With the System 2000 Pad Washer, there's actually a pump wheel in here and you place the rotary buffer in here bring your uh, motor up to RPMs, bring it up to speed, and it's going to run that pump wheel. It's going to pull the cleaning solution into the pad. Then there's, t there's a series of plastic spur, spur wheels in here, which are going to agitate these fibers and remove that built up residue off there. So you just run it for a few minutes, then you lift it up, bring the RPMs up, and that'll sling off any excess water. Look how clean that is. Now, if you have a spur, the next thing you'd want to do after you clean the pad washer is go ahead and spur it again. And that'll, again, it'll remove anything the pad washer might have missed, but it'll also kind of fluff up the fibers. That makes buffing a lot easier. Again, I'm going to bring that up. I don't need it that high though. Bring my speed up. I'm going to lock this against my leg. Then just run that spur right over the face of the pad. And here's a little tip. When this thing is powered on, since it's spinning in this direction, which when I look at it, that's clockwise, but down here it's counterclockwise, you only want to stay from this side over. If you get over here, you might throw that up in your face. So just stay to the right hand side. Run that spur over the face of the pad. That'll clean the pad and also reflip of the fibers. Now I'm ready to put some fresh product down and start buffing this top section. Well, those are some tips and techniques for working on vertical panels when using the rotary buffer or the Flex 3401. And just to recap, that's what we showed you today is how to pick up your bead so you don't throw splatter everywhere. And that's basically using the 10 at 10 technique. That's where you lay your pad against the paint, tilt it up a little bit to the right side so this is just barely touching down, then run that bead in at the 10 o'clock, then as soon as you get past it, lay the pad down flat, start working that section. And of course, you can modify that. All you need to do is start figuring out from the way the pad's rotating, how we'd have to pick up the bead to pull it into the pad instead of splattering it all over the place. Of course, tape off things you want to get splatter on or anything with a hard edge just to make sure you don't burn the paint in case you actually run the buffer into these areas. And of course, use good techniques. Have your, your legs spread at shoulder width, Hold the polisher close to you when you're buffing, not outreach like this. Hold the pad flat to the surface. When you're removing swirls and scratches, other serious defects, start out with medium pressure. Lighten your pressure up as you finish your passes. And of course, what we did today was just a demonstration, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to foam, repolish this section, and then put some wax on this truck and give it back to the owner. For more information on anything you've seen here today, visit autogeek.net. And you can always call our friendly customer care hotline at 1-800 869-3011. And don't forget to swing by our fun and friendly discussion forum where you'll find me answering questions and posting new how-to articles. I'm your host Mike Phillips and I'll see you again on the next edition of Auto Geek Show Car Garage.